there, I'm your host, Dan Rojas. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to capture the excess heat from a generator in case you have a power outage. You can use the same heat exchanger that we're going to be using for solar to get the heat that the exhaust system, the muffler has, that just pretty much goes out in the open space. Of course, you don't want to put one of these inside of your house, garage, whatever, because they will kill you with the carbon monoxide. You do not want to try to cr be creative and come up with a way to heat air in your house it's cold after a big storm because a little leak you could be just don't do it this is just for water because you're not gonna take a shower and it's just copper it's water going through there so this is all outside of your house and the heat exchanger goes into the water tank so you're not running this directly into your house okay if that makes sense to you what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you a little bit different method of how we're going to be testing this, why I'm using a gallon of water versus a circulating pump, because for a real system with solar, you're going to use a circulating pump, but I'll talk to you about that. This way we can get measurements. I have some copper tubing. I'm doing the siphon thing. There's an easier way than submerging the whole thing like I showed you before. You can crimp one end and then pull it out and it's kind of like if you put your finger over a straw. It doesn't really come out if you do it fast. It's better to just make sure you don't have water in there. I'm going to show you that real quick and I'm going to explain to you why sand is not a bad option. But if you have a really long piece of tube, like or imagine if this was filled with sand. Okay, now some people will say, so you kind of have to pack it in there when you bend it. And some people will tell you, well, you just take an air compressor and blow it out. But if you really think that a bunch of sand is going to blow out of this all the way through, it's just going to get plugged somewhere and it's pretty difficult. Salt, the idea is, is that you can actually put salt in there too and then submerge it in water and the salt dissolves. The problem with that is I've done that before a long time ago and I ended up with a glob of rock salt in there that pretty much never came out. So short pieces, yeah, it'll work. Wider tube, like say that you had like half inch diameter tube, three, maybe even three quarters, it'd probably work, but for thinner tube, it's just not really an option. So I have this siphon going. So we got a good crimp there and you can see that it's still dripping. That proves to you that that alone is not going to do the job. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my hot glue in this one end right now. What you would do is pull it out kind of fast and put your finger over it. And then once it's up like this, you should be able to see that there's water there and there is. So as long as this is elevated above, it's probably not going to drip out too much because it's kind of like when you have your finger over the straw, but I'm gonna put a crimp in this. By the way, another method, if you happen to be in a big hurry and you're doing something that doesn't have a lot of intricate design, you can just take a candle like this and just jam that in that's, that, that's after the crimp. What you do is you jam wax in there if you do a good crimp, it will hold it. You can see the wax is squeezing out and there's some stuck in there. So this is the one heat exchanger that I made for the video. And what I'm gonna do is show you the water heater. So this is an old out of commission 120 volt electric water heater with the 1500 watt element in here. If you work with these, never release, never remove this, the pressure release valve, because it's just always safe to have those. Ideally, you can take these lugs out here and you have the same pipe threading. So you can, but as these tanks get older, this one basically impossible to do. The ratchet that fits in there nicely, it did that to it. So these. Over time, if the anode rod, which goes in here, which is what we're going to be using, if that goes bad, the one that I had is completely just a little wire left, that stuff will actually start to get really bad. So you don't want to let them get like this. We're going to be, this tank still seals, so we're going to be using it for testing. 
and I'm gonna be explaining one thing to you really quick. We'll go over this in a future video, but the way that this goes like this, this would just drop into one of the holes and tighten down and you've got this inside. But then what you would do is you'd put fuel line hose that fits over there with a the clamp. So you would have your in and your out. It doesn't really matter which direction you go and your heated fluid would, would run through that and transfer it to the water. For the solar collector, what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be testing a few things. This is a 100 foot big dump truck. This is a 100 foot polyethylene tubing and the fuel line hose fits in there with the clamp. So it's very easy installation. So if you were to spiral this out, slowly run water through there and feed it back, this would be absorbing the sunlight, heating your exchange fluid inside of here, through, transferring it, and back again. So the out portion, you would have a small circulating pump on there. Now, I'm not gonna be using a small circulating pump for our test for a couple reasons. In previous videos that we did, whether it was with heating air with a small blower fan going through something or uh, transferring water through a loop, people who, I don't wanna say they didn't know what they're talking about, but they really didn't assume that the impeller blade is heating up the water. If a 10 watt transfer pump can heat the water for a water tank, then you don't need all the solar and you're in a world that doesn't exist. A little 10 watt pump's not gonna do it, but just for the sake of argument, what I'm gonna be doing, and actually to be able to measure the differences, I'm gonna be using either a gallon of water siphoned like I did in the one video, or I have this big 12 gallon Pyrex vintage container, which is really cool, I cleaned it up. So what we'll do, we'll raise this up and we will transfer, just let it do its own thing. Water from here through this tubing into the tank, out again, and collect it in a basin over here so we don't waste the water. So there's no pump, it's just gravity. And we're gonna see what 12 gallons does to the 19 gallons that this holds. So we can kind of get some estimates. We could put one gallon to a smaller container and we can get an idea of how effective the heat exchanger is. Now there's a better way to do this, but for this video, we're gonna be running a very simple test. These are our generators, two of them. I've got more, but these are the generators, generally the kind you get for work or hurricane preparation. This area here is the exhaust, and this gets very hot. That's why there's a heat shield on it. And you also get carbon monoxide gas out of there, so you don't want to put this in your house. Yeah, it would make a great heater, but it would probably kill you within a few minutes, so you wouldn't need it. Also, there's things you could do to heat air with this, but don't mess with that because the mildest leak and you're pumping deadly gas into your house or you're removing valuable oxygen from your house and you will kill anyone inside. So water on the other hand is quite different because we're, it's very difficult to get anything into this. So what I'm gonna be doing is just kind of wrapping this around. The ideal way would be to take your heat cover off put this around tightly and that way you don't have a lot of a lot of rattling and because there's water in there or it's copper it's just going to transfer the heat so this isn't going to overheat I mean if you thoroughly wrap the whole thing extremely well yeah you might do some damage but if you're running water through it it doesn't make a difference so the idea is if you have a hurricane your power goes out or a storm and your power is out for say a couple days you would run this to power your house and instead of spending four or 5,000 watts on an electric heater, by the way, there's a little hack I can show you for that later too, but you're gonna just use this for your refrigerator, your lights, whatever you need, maybe a small AC unit, and the heat that comes off of here is gonna heat this up, and this is gonna be circulating right into our water container. So it's massive heat that's there, you're gonna be taking the efficiency, the you're gonna be taking the inefficiency of this engine and using it to heat your water. So what I'm gonna do for the test, the, obviously you don't wanna block this, and yes, there is a lot of heat that comes out of, off of there. So a perfect version of this would have a spiraling coming this way. We can make that in a future video. I just wanna test this right now to see if just the contact transfers the heat. So if this was running for like a minute and I did that, I'd burn my fingers. 
by the way, you can do this with car engines too, but don't mess with your car. It's, anyways, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and feed this through and just wrap it around the best that I can. Like I said, you should be, you should probably take this off and do it the right way. But I'm doing this kind of like, uh, pretending I don't have tools and know what I'm doing. It's kind of like a rough draft. enough of this so if we get success out of our rough draft then obviously taking the entire muffler unit off and wrapping it the right way is the way to do it nice and tight to where you don't end up with any rattling because this is probably going to make a lot of noise you always want to make sure that you have room to cut your pipe with one of these um, you could probably use a little saw or something but I don't want to get copper pieces into the motor of this so this is a really neat little small version of it. It's actually made for the size, actually bigger too, but it works really good. It's not a, as much of a pain in the ass as the bigger ones for small and right? So when I pop that other end, if we kept the seal, water should come out of there because it's higher. You want to make sure you leave yourself room to work if you're doing it like this, because once if you can't cut it off, there's no sense in uh I mean, you could just cut it and then drill it out, but you want to make it at least have a chance for this. There you go. And look at that. The water comes out. That means that there's flow going through there and it's not leaking. So I went ahead and put that cheek poly tubing on where there's no heat. I'm going to put this on and see if I can... I'm gonna put this on and see if I can draw a siphon out of it. So I don't know if there we go, that wasn't on tight. So you can see that it's siphoning, so that the water is going out of that gallon so what's so what's happening is the water is coming out of the gallon around the muffler exhaust system and it's dripping out right there so if you set this up you might want to label it because if somebody else comes along and you're away they're going to be like what the hell is he doing and they might think it's a fuel line and do something really stupid and you don't want fuel to go through there so just keep that in mind.
that's the test for today. I'm going to be doing the complete setup, maybe taking that off and wrapping it really good since we know it works. See what we get with that because even with that water around there, the muffler was still 400 and some degrees Fahrenheit. So it wasn't pulling hardly anything off of it, wasn't blocking it or anything. So that simple system would work to just warm water. This is part whatever, three, two, what, this is part three of the series we're gonna be doing on the heat exchangers and ways that you can get water into a water heating tank or whatever you make. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos. So this board is gonna be an absorber for that black hose to connect to. These are lenticular lens pieces. It's better to put them on in pieces, believe it or not. The whole piece kind of gets a weird shape to it. And this is just sitting out in the sun. The maximum temperature has been 150 degrees. This is with foam spray. This is just with regular um, countertop adhesive and it doesn't really stay that good. You can see this piece fell off over here. But when it's attached to the foam spray, it acts kind of as a insulator to it. And the back of this I painted with black paint. That gets about 139. The lenticular lenses, come on. And that's cooled down a bit because a cloud came over. But the lenticular lenses actually work better. So I'm gonna tell you where you can get lenticular lenses like this. I'll give you a hint, I have a whole bunch of them and I'm gonna be selling them. And the reason they work so good is that they have little ridges in them. So their surface area is about double what a normal flat piece would be, but you don't really get double because it's not perfectly all stretched at the sun, but it does increase it and they hold up really well. They've, I've had some out in the sun for 10 years, just laying out in the yard that I cleaned up over there. Gotta do this mess next, but these are really awesome and you put them on in strips they break real easily into long pieces and if you put them on in strips you don't get that weird shape to them 